guys, welcome back to my channel. We're doing things a little bit differently today, as you can tell. I've relocated to a different filming space. Um, if I grab this blanket on the left of me, don't be alarmed. I get very cold. So, you know, I might just snuggle up with a blanket real quick, but we're keeping it casual as I normally do on my channel. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. Today, this video is dedicated to my Bachelor of Science people. I am one of you. I graduated from the University of New Haven with my Bachelor of Science in pre-medical biology and the reason I wanted to make this video is because I feel like a lot of Bachelor of Science majors come to my channel trying to figure out what jobs they can find but I actually realized you all don't know what titles to look for. And I noticed that on my TikTok, I put out a list of different opportunities, but I can't leave my OGs hanging. I can't leave the YouTube people hanging because you guys are really what's built this Career Savage community. So today that's what I'm gonna be covering. Different job titles. I'm gonna put all these jobs in the description box. I'll talk through some of the jobs and what they are, and then I'll just list out the rest. So make sure you stick around and watch the entire video. So the first job I wanna talk about today is actually clinical research assistant. You might see these jobs a lot on LinkedIn. Big CROs such as Icon, PLC, Cineos Health, they'll have a bunch of new grads working as CRAs because one, every CRA has to get training on the job. And what a CRA's responsibility is, you're going from site to site within your area that is partner with the sponsor, which could be a pharmaceutical company, to execute what's written in a protocol. Let's just take UCLA Hospital, for example. Let's say UCLA is a site where a pharmaceutical company is partnered with a doctor or a principal investigator at that site to work on a clinical study for depression. Maybe they chose that hospital because a lot of co college students go to that hospital. And we know college students have a lot of depression. What a CRA is going to do is going to go to that site and be working with the pr principal investigators. You're going to be making sure the study is done per the study protocol. We want as little as deviations as possible. And that is why it's so important to have a qualified and well-trained CRA going to these sites. Now, a lot of people don't like to be CRAs long-term. Why? Because you get burnt out. When I say you are traveling, it's literally like being a traveling nurse. You're going from site to site, driving all over the place. Sometimes you're flying to different places. If you work for a company that assigns people per state or per region, like you could get the whole west side of the United States or you can get the whole east side of the United States. So it's a great job, in my opinion, for new grads to start out in because you get so much experience, so much exposure. You're working with the clinical study coordinators as well. You're working with regulatory. You're working with the PIs. So maybe you're realizing, hmm, I want to go back to school and get and become a nurse practitioner, or maybe I want to go to med school. Maybe I don't want to go to med school after working this job. So you can work as a CRA and you can pivot to other departments later on. You can pivot to quality. You can pivot, pivot to clinical operations because you get so much exposure in that role. CRAs also make a lot of money. So again, it's kind of a trade-off where you're making great money, but you get burnt out very, very quickly. And it is a high stress job, especially if you're working for a CRO. If you haven't seen my CRO video, go check it out. You'll know what I'm talking about. Another job you can branch into is medical writing associate. I've talked about medical writing on my channel before and a lot of people don't believe that there are medical writing entry level jobs, albeit they're hard to find, but they are available. So if you're interested in being a scientific writer, even in your undergrad, in some of your classes, you took a scientific writing course or you wrote a grant or you did something that taught you a lot of medical terminology throughout your undergrad course, using that experience in your educational realm, you can translate that into a medical writing associate role. Associate roles are gen generally entry level roles, so that's definitely something you could branch out into if you like writing. Being a medical writer is a very high stress job, and as you move up higher and higher, the more you have to write, the more responsibility you have, just like with any job. You guys already know what I'm gonna say, you could also do regulatory affairs, uh, regulatory affairs specialists or associates, you're kind of supporting management. So you're helping maintain the applications. You're not responsible for anything, but you're doing a lot of the administrative upkeep. You're not going to provide regulatory strategy, but you're going to do things that help implement regulatory strategy. So if a regulatory strategist says, we want to do a pre-IND meeting, 
someone who's a manager or associate director who might be below the highest strategist, which is like the executive director, senior vice president or whatever, or it depends on the organization. But they would say, okay, the manager, come up with a meeting request, help draft the meeting request, start writing it a little bit. While that manager is focusing on those things, they may ask you to do their cover letters. They may ask you to do forms. They may give you opportunities to grow into the next role, like supporting other departments. If that manager can't attend those meetings, they may have you attend in their place, taking meetings minutes at FDA meetings if you get the opportunity to be invited. But having all that exposure at the assistant and associate level is going to help you transition into the next role or the next step in regulatory. If you want to know more about regulatory affairs, you already know you can check out pretty much all the videos on my channel. Of course, many of us may know this or maybe we don't, but as a Bachelor of Science graduate, you can apply for a laboratory job. You can actually work in a lab. You can be a microbiology associate. You can be an associate scientist. You can be a cell therapy specialist. A lot of these jobs where we think, well, I don't know how to do cell cultures or I don't remember how to do cell cultures from undergrad in my lab. It doesn't matter. They teach you their own protocols in the lab anyway. A lot of these entry level jobs, they will teach you regulatory affairs. They teach you a lot of what is done per the company's procedures and SOPs. Same goes for working in a lab. In, if you're a microbiology scientist or associate and you work in a lab, they're going to teach you what needs to be done. So don't feel afraid or shy to apply for those jobs, but any scientist role you generally could apply to. Now I know a lot of people don't like to work in labs, which is why the other jobs I've listed so far would be probably more applicable to you. Another job you could also do is work in quality assurance. Quality assurance is essentially working with SOPs and making sure that companies are abiding by the standard operating procedures for that organization. Every company is going to have different SOPs. Every company is going to have different work instructions. So what someone does in quality assurance is making sure that the company and the people are abiding by those procedures and instructions. And if there are any deviations, somebody in quality assurance would open a CAPA or um, other quality procedures to resolve any issues. Those are just some general jobs. Now I'm going to run down the list of the jobs that also apply to people with a Bachelor of Science. Clinical Project Manager. It's not only biotech that has project managers. We also have Clinical Project Lead. We have Drug Safety Associate, which is pharmacovigilance. That's the safety aspect of working for a pharmaceutical company. Companies, whether the drug is approved or not approved, is required to continually follow the safety of their product. Labeling Associate. You're going to be working with the, a department it's kind of sub department of regulatory, but there's a whole team dedicated to the labeling for products. You know, there's labeling negotiations when you're about to get into your approval stage for your product or NDA or BLA. There's a whole um, time frame for negotiating what goes in a label. We also have clinical data manager, clinical operations associate, clinical trial assistant, scientific affairs associate. A lot of times, scientific affairs is kind of like medical writing, and you're just more focused on like articles and stuff like that like getting your company published in the New England Journal of Medicine, that kind of thing. Medical affairs scientist, health project manager. These jobs that I'm about to list are more so on the healthcare side, working for like a hospital or something, um, or even an insurance company or a biotech company. Healthcare program manager, healthcare editor, healthcare strategist, healthcare planner, healthcare compliance manager, healthcare change management. I didn't even go into the sub pockets for a lot of these. Like I said, regulatory affairs associate, there's a whole CMC side to that, which is the chemistry manufacturing and controls aspect. So keep in mind that these are just some jobs that you can search. I also made another video about how to look for jobs on LinkedIn. People think that you have to look the exact job title. You can just type in cell therapy, just type in cell therapy under jobs on LinkedIn. All the jobs in cell therapy are going to come up. Type in bachelor of science. A bunch of jobs that have bachelor's of science somewhere in the, whether it's in the job description, the body, the title, those jobs are going to come up. That's how you're going to figure out and find what other jobs are applicable to your degree. I feel so old for saying this, but when I was graduating college, LinkedIn was useless. Okay. LinkedIn didn't let you search jobs and all of a sudden all the job titles are going to come up for you. I had to do this list, curate this list, this search on my own, literally from Google and just trying to find it. We didn't have TikTok and all these other things where people are giving information. Even and then on YouTube, you see that I'm like one of the only people that talks about regulatory affairs or clinical research in detail. I'm giving you this list. I'm giving you the keys. You know what to do. Go to LinkedIn and search your degree. It will help you find a job. Same goes for psychology, business, everybody. Even if you're trying to do like a job transition and you feel like you have a skill, type that skill in 
in the LinkedIn job section. It'll help you find what is applicable to you based on your skill set and your education. I hope you found this video useful. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you never miss a video I post every single week. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok if you want to see day-to-day -day career advice and tips and a little bit more insight into my everyday life. Thanks so much for watching guys. Until next time. Bye.